Okay, the purpose of this next budget is to discuss everything about the 2017-18 federal budget. What's keep us in, keeping us in deficit, how are we working towards our strategy, and what are the key policies for each goal. Now the first thing you would need to recognise is the size of the deficit. The size of the deficit this year has gone from $37.6 billion to $29.4 billion. So if you're analysing this stance, looking at the tables, you would need to imply that this is a mildly contractionary budget. There is again a smaller gap between budget expenses or injections and linkages, which implies a slightly contractionary budget. If I was given a table like this, I'd also be quoting the size of the percentage of GDP. So the size of the deficit as a percentage of GDP has also decreased from 2.1% to 1.6%. When you are given a table like this, you want to analyse the figures as much as you possibly can. And this clear, these figures clearly show a move towards fiscal consolidation, particularly you know, if we can continue into 2018-19 and then again the surpluses by 2021. This is consistent with our medium-term fiscal strategy. The budget surpluses are continuing to decline, which implies a contractionary stance and a commitment towards our got medium-term fiscal strategy. So the underlying deficit in 17-18 is estimated to be 29.4 million. This is a reduction from 37.4 billion, which implies it's mildly contractionary. Um, at the start of the year, they did predict 26.1 billion for this year for the 17-18 budget, but unfortunately, the budget outcome has been widened because of slightly weaker growth than predicted. So wage growth has been slower than what they thought it would be. We've had low inflation, which has meant we've collected less tax receipts, um, through, like less bracket creep and things like this. And around two billion of the larger deficit was caused by discretionary measures. So they would have implemented more expansionary policies throughout the year than they thought they would. Um, so overall, the structural deficit has increased since last year by $233 million. So this actually implies that it's mildly expansionary because the structural part of the budget has increased since last year, the deficit. But overall, the budget can be described as mildly contractionary because it's a smaller budget deficit. Um, some things that have caused the budget deficit to de decline a little bit this year is the rebounding commodity prices. So that's helped to increase tax receipts, increase company tax, increase incomes, which has boosted um, the amount of receipts the government collects. There's been a slight reduction in unemployment, now to 5.5%. Um, but some things that are keeping us in deficit and making it hard for us to achieve fiscal consolidation is the fact that wages remain slow. So the government's you know, ability to collect revenue is only growing at a slow rate as opposed to a fast rate when wages are growing up really fast. Growth has only been 1.7% this year, which is not great, and unemployment's consistently been above 5%. This in combination with increased levels of underemployment has made it hard for the government to increase their revenues fast enough. The Australian dollar is also starting to rise again. It's the um, highest it's been for quite a long time, which can make us less competitive in our tradable sector and lead to less income and company taxes in those sectors. There's also been some discretionary reasons why the deficit has fallen. So the government's implemented policies like the excise taxes on tobacco and the multinational profits tax, which has helped to reduce the deficit. But then other expansionary policies um, make it harder for us to get back to surplus. So the government's been committed to lowering company tax rates. They've put, spent the money on the youth jobs path. They've increased the 32.5 cent tax bracket, and these all things all make it harder for us to achieve our goal of fiscal consolidation because they have an expansionary impact on the economy. In terms of policies, we'll go through these one by one, but you need to know policies for each goal. So the main policy for full employment is the Skilled Australians Fund. They are putting a levy on immigration, they've replaced the old 457 visa scheme, and now they've got a temporary skilled visa, but that visa is great because it comes with a levy attached to it, which firstly encourages you to employ Australians, and secondly, that levy is going towards funding the Skilled Australians Fund, which means that that should help to provide skills for apprenticeships and other jobs going forward. The Job Seeker Compliance Framework, we'll talk about that a little bit more later on, but that's about making it harder to receive welfare, uh, introducing that demerit point system where people fail to turn up to interviews, then they can be um, scrapped of their welfare for a certain period of time. Infrastructure spending, I'll elaborate on more on, but your main goal for strong and sustainable growth is the increase in infrastructure spending in Western Sydney, the Brisbane to Melbourne rail link, etc. And for low inflation, focus on extension of the accelerated depreciation allowances is your main goal there. Um, policies for fiscal consolidation, there are quite a lot this year. The increase in the Medicare levy, which we'll talk about in the next video, the increasing university fees, which is putting less pressure on the government to provide university. 
um, the increase in the bank levy, as well as those new compliance measures so the government can save around $632 million in welfare. For living standards, um, some of the things to talk about is the fact that they're making it slightly easier for people to buy their first home because of the super saver scheme. They spent $340 million to counter terrorism, as well as um, the $510 million on a new medicine to cater for chronic heart disease. In terms of some of the weaknesses or challenges we face in helping to achieve fiscal consolidation, some of these contractionary measures may not pass, so the medical levy may take a while to get through the Senate, which makes it more difficult to achieve this goal of fiscal consolidation. The infrastructure projects may take longer than anticipated to have their desired effect, and the implementation lags make it harder to get out of a trough sometimes than um, potentially because it takes a while for expansionary policies even to get through the two houses.